Hello there, this is another video about wavelengths, but this is slightly different. Instead of a graph or some strange random graph, we are going to look at how do we decide the threshold wavelengths of different metals and what does the threshold wavelength mean like? Mean? Mean like? Mm, grammar problem. What does the threshold wavelength mean, especially when uh, thinking about work function? Okay, so we're going to start normal, pretty normal, warm up question by a definition or explain what is meant by the photoelectric effect for two marks. So describe what you would normally see, which is, this is the emission. There are so many ways to write the sentence, okay? Emission of photoelectrons. When does it happen? When uh, photons incident, because light, we use the word incident, on a metal surface. Okay, la, good enough. Next. One wavelength of EM radiation emitted by the mercury vapor lamp is 436 nanometer. So different vapor will have different wavelength one. Why is that? You stay tuned. Somewhere later in quantum, we'll talk about this. But right now, you are asked to calculate the photon energy corresponding to its wavelength. So you can use E is equal to HC over lambda, which we will use again and again throughout this chapter. So Planck constant, 6.63 times 10 to the power negative 34. Uh, speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8. And the wavelength we have here is 436 times 10 to the power nano, negative 9. So you show your substitution, big and clear, and then you punch your calculators, uh, not too violently, but still punch your calculator. Ding. Learn to use the alphabet E, okay? 436E, negative 9, and you will get 4.5619, but 3SF is enough, times 10 to the power of negative 19. So your answer can be 2 to 3SF, okay? Because this speed of light is 3.0. So I can put 4.56 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Easy. Easy. Easy claps. So this tool, you can get 4 marks. Done. Next. Oh, interesting. The light from the lamp in B is incident. So this light for the lamp in B, right, have photon energy... Not big brain energy, just photon energy. But the one over lambda graph was a big brain graph, la, my guys. Okay, so photon energy here, we calculated just now, is 4.56 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joule. Okay, sure. Data for the work function energies. Ooh. For two types of metals, cesium and tungsten, is given in figure 10.1. Calculate the threshold wavelength for photoelectric emission for cesium part 1 and for tungsten part 2. Okay, so you know the work function energy and you know that work function energy is equal to Hc over lambda naught. This lambda naught down here, this one, oh, this is your threshold. Threshold wavelength. So I guess they want you to calculate using this. But whenever you involve physical constant, right, this uh, work function uh, which equation also looks like energy of a photon because they are talking about similar stuff. This one will have a unit of joule. But this one has a unit of e volt. Do you know how to convert e volt to joule? Yes, miss, I know. I divide, no, not divide. I multiply by the electronic charge. Good, very good. So... We're going to use E is equal to HC over lambda naught. I'm just going to rearrange, okay? Lambda naught is HC over E. So this will be the same. 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34. 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, for cesium, this is 1.4. But don't forget to multiply by the electronic charge. 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So this down here is the conversion. This one here, or this entire one, is converting e volt to joule. You have to take all the SI units. Okay, so time to punch calculator again. And if you didn't divide, <laughs> if you did not, I mean, delete the previous answer, you can just continue. 
like what I'm doing now. Big brain, you know. Lazy to type 6.63, 3 times 10 power 8, over and over again. Okay, so this one I get 8, 8. Ooh, 8, 8, 8. 8, 8, 8. Mm, I'm so happy. I don't know where to write. Uh, 8, 8, 8. I mean, 8.88 .8 times 10 power negative 7 meter. But we will see here. Nanometer. Hiya. So this one need to write as 8, 8, 8 times 10 to the power negative 9 which is 888 nanometer. You can see I'm quite happy, right? But you can also write 890, la, okay? My inner Chinese is judging you. 88. Beautiful. All right, let's call, let's repeat again for tungsten. I your miss, I got to repeat again. Ayalo. If you feel very like sian or bored, you just copy the one on top. La. What changes for tungsten? Only the work function energy. That's why this one, they also only give you one mark. But what is the work function energy? Let me copy everything first. And sneak the work function energy here. Oh, 4.5. 4.5, okay. So I'm going to put 4.5 here. And I'll tell you what is the big brain moment I have. I haven't pressed cancel in my calculator yet. So I'm going to just reverse, reverse, reverse. I'm going to change this 1.4 in my calculator to 4.5. 4.5. Big brain, guys. No need to repeat working. Ma. So this is 2.76 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. Which I guess in nanometer is 276 nanometer. No? Alright. So you can see if the energy is larger, like 4.5 is larger, the wavelength is shorter. So that the frequency is larger. Alright. So this makes sense because tungsten it's much more stable. We have tungsten wire you use in your lab. The wire that you stick on some of the meter rules in your paper tree, those are tungsten wires. Okay, so It's very stable. They don't oxidize easily. They don't react easily. They don't rust easily. Whereas cesium, I think it's a group 2 element. And I think it explodes when it touches water. Mm, this one is very active. That's why you can see the, they are very willing to give you the electron Trade the electron with you at very low energy. Cesium is more reactive than tungsten. Whenever I see this number, 1.4, 4.5, I know cesium more reactive. When we say more reactive, it's more ready, more willing to trade, Nola, more willing to release electron. Okay? So this is some added perspective for you. But let's look at the final part. Use your answers of all your previous calculation. Sure. State and explain. This is the pain point. State and explain whether the radiation from the mercury lamp, so don't forget, the mercury lamp lambda is equal to, what was it again? 436, I believe. Ah, 436 nanometer. Lai Lai, put here. Mercury lamp is 436 nanometer. Hiya, why I... Mm, didn't see here. That's not a big brain moment. Okay, will give rise to photoelectric effect from each method. So now we need to compare the wavelength. Okay, let's look at cesium first. Threshold wavelength is the maximum allowed wavelength. So if you want photoelectric effect, the greatest possible wavelength is 888. 436 is so... Far from 888, smaller than 888, so can. So in this case, you can say that the wavelength of photon, I write short form, okay? Lambda of photon is less than the lamp threshold frequency, lambda naught of cesium. Implying that, so this is implying that, the uh, photon energy, energy of photon, is greater than the work function. So hence, yes, there is photoelectric emission. To get one mark for this statement, 
you need to at least say compare the wavelength of photon to the threshold frequency and then draw your conclusion. Okay. Second one, tungsten. Tungsten's threshold wavelength uh, is 200 something. That means uh, if you want tungsten to give you its electron, the largest possible wavelength you can incident photon on it is 276. If largest possible is 276, 436, explode leo. Bao pang. It's uh, what's that say? You play black and then you're more than 21. So this is the threshold wavelength. Cannot be more than this one. You play black cannot be more than 21. You want photo electron, your wavelength cannot be more than 276. 436. Uh, I uh, came over. Okay. So in this case, you can say that the wavelength of photon is greater than lambda naught of tungsten. So we have to compare like and like things. So if you compare wavelength, you have to compare wavelength. And in fact, because they say use the calculation, uh, use your answers in C. Let me see if I can. Okay, they're not going to highlight for me. So use your answer in C means you must use lambda to explain. Okay, this energy of photon is greater than this one, finally. <laughs> this one here is just an extra explanation for you. Okay, so if you need the extra explanation for your brain, you can say energy of photon now is not enough than work function. So because of this, no. There is no photoelectric emission. So if this kind of question, you can only lose mark because there are so many ways to decide whether there's photoelectric effect. Okay, But since they ask you to use your answers that you have calculated, you have to use wavelength. But what are the other ways that you can decide whether uh, this metal can release or not? Well, maybe you can find the work function 1.4 and 4.5. So just convert this to Joule. You convert 1.4 to Joule, you convert 4.5 to Joule, and then you compare this with the value of the energy of the photon. It's also another method. Okay, so I think uh, if you compare, if you convert this to Joule, and you convert this to Joule, and you compare all this energy value, this is a minimum energy. Ma. So if you exceed this minimum energy, then you have photoelectric effect. No? So you can compare energy. You can compare frequency. So you can compare energy with work function. Let me write down for you. Need to summarize. Okay, so you can compare energy of photon versus work function. You can compare. So the frequency of photon must be greater than or equal to threshold frequency. Wavelength of photon must be less than or equal to threshold wavelength. Okay, so these are the instances where you will get photoelectric emission. Say yes to photo emission. All right, so different questions will ask you differently, but they're all the same. Go try some past years. So many, almost every year got. All right, so that's it for this question. You probably can see that sometimes they will ask you to look at frequency or look at wavelength or look at energy of photon. In this case, if they specify wavelength, because they specify the calculation, you have to use it. So what we learn here is read the question. But otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward question. And wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine marks. Not bad. Okay, so I hope this simple example is helpful to you in your studies. Don't forget to share your videos with your friends so we can learn and ace A2 together. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Okay.